Joining us from the United Kingdom are Rima Labo, medical doctor, Albert Enstall by the third general. And both of their bios are amazing. We've got 51 minutes with them. We're talking about the forced inoculation plans worldwide, level six, what's really in the triple jab, the right of self-shielding, what that means, the new developments with the uh, U.S. head science czar writing a, an internal government textbook, 1,100 pages, on how to carry out a world government eugenics extermination plan. This is confirmation of everything we've reverse engineered. State Department Memorandum 200. United Nations Biological Diversity Assessment 96. We, we have all the pieces. It's all stated, but this is all in one place. And it's just devastating because even though I know all this stuff, you don't want to believe they're actually doing it. Forced drugging, forced sterilization, forced abortion, drugs in the water, the food, genetically engineered to sterilize mammals. It's coming up. Major General Albert Burt Stubblebine, the third U.S. Army retired, graduate of U.S. Military Academy, West Point, class of 52, who enjoyed a distinguished 32-year career in U.S. Army, during which he commanded soldiers at every level. After his retirement, he served as VP for intelligence systems with uh, BDM, a major defense contractor. He's, t he's also taken the set of experiences and become involved in leading uh, edge medical research and development in collaboration with his wife, Rima E. Labo, MD. He is a long-term, way-out-of-the-box thinker who redesigned the U.S. Army's intelligence architecture while serving as the commanding general of the U.S. Army Intelligence School and Center and helped to define the requirements of the U.S. Army to future conflict and redesigned and earned his place in the Intelligence Hall of Fame. Many of the innovations he developed helped U.S. conduct the first Gulf War effectively and swiftly with a very low casualty rate. He also commanded the U.S. Army Electronic Research and Development Command and the U.S. Army's Intelligence and Security Command. And it just goes on and on. So, uh, I guess, General, then you'd be a major general when you retired? That is correct. Okay. We're going to go to you in a second, sir, and we appreciate you joining us on the interview today. Let's go to your wife, the medical doctor, first uh, in light of, give us your perspective, and then I want to get the general's perspective, on the mass eugenics plan. We have right of self-defense. This is a government-level Ph.D. textbook for government leaders, for policy. I've now read over 400 pages of the 1,100. Total nightmare. Doctor, this is exactly what you've been saying for decades break down what this new development means, then we'll get the general's take, and then we'll expand out into what this flu vaccination means. I'm happy to do that, Alex, and I want, to know, I want you to know that both the general and I are happy and privileged to have the opportunity to talk to you and your listeners about this. This is a critical time, and the first thing I want to do is start at the very end. The very end is unless you, listeners, take action now, you will be faced with involuntary detention or mandatory vaccination with an attenuated live virus vaccine containing deadly adjuvants, the same things that caused Gulf War syndrome in 700,000 soldiers. And you will have no recourse, no legal recourse, and you will have no financial recourse because vaccine makers are protected by the Fraud and Death Administration and by the Spineless Worthless Congress of the United States. And if you'd like later, Alex, I'll tell you how I feel about the Congress. Anyway, the point is that you have a moment now. If you go to our website, which is healthfreedomusa.org, Health freedomusa.org, and you click on the top action item under Act Now, you will be telling Congress, your state legislators, the head of Health and Human Services, the Health of Homeland Security, and the White House that you want the right to refuse vaccines, refuse incarceration, and instead retire to your home for the, um, the quarantine period and self Shield. Now, the best friend that Health Freedom has in the United States Congress is willing to take this onto the floor and create a bill and introduce a bill if there is enough support from all of us. So if ever you valued your freedom, if ever you valued your right to make your own health decisions, and if ever you distrusted the government, now is the time. Go to healthfreedomusa.org and click on the top action item, because if you don't, 
you will be either mandatorily vaccinated or you will be incarcerated. And now to answer your question, Alex, because that's the bottom line, the answer is yes, the vaccine of this, uh, against this genetically engineered weaponized H1N1 virus, which we are now being told, golly gee willikers, this resembles the 1918 swine flu pandemic virus. Well, yes, of course it does, because the genes were introduced intentionally into this new virus when they fizzled after being introduced into the avian flu virus. So now the vaccine will be a deadly, quote, remedy to get rid of a large number of us. And we're going, if we're a sheeple, we're going to line up, roll up our sleeves, present our children for vaccination the way 40 million Americans did in 10 weeks during the, the swine flu debacle in um, 1976, only this time they won't stop it after 10 weeks because the intention we firmly believe, and we've been writing about it for years, is you have this time the intention is to get rid of us profitably. The amount of money that is being poured into the coffers of the world pharmaceutical companies is absolutely un holy, as is the intent. In fact, today, the World Health Organization put out, I'm sorry, yesterday, World Health Organization put out a uh, press release saying that what we need for this and the coming pandemic, because remember, Alex, this vaccine is not the last pandemic vaccine. It's the first of many, 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 many horrors to come until they've gotten rid of all of us. This is what's needed. We need many new vaccines. We need new patents. We need new drugs. Because well, if you look how they ramp it up, they're, they admittedly are testing global level six with all the major nation states under the direction of the World Health Organization, this global directorate. And so it's kind of like a Jim Jones Kool-Aid drinking drill where they drill following orders and taking the poison. And they admit, well, I mean, I mean you've looked at this, doctor, and I want to get General Stubblebine's take on it. What is the history of these companies, we know that uh, Baxter, I just put it on screen, London Telegraph, uh, Baxter mixing the live bird flu in 18 countries secretly, then suddenly they have secret trials lying to homeless, but they won't say it's Baxter that did the trials, and the homeless are dying in mass. Actually, I believe the trials were done by Novartis, and I believe that they were in conjunction with Sanofi Aventis, the good people who manufactured a an avian flu vaccine, which the United States bought a hundred million doses of in their first order, totally untested, untried, but approved by the uh, the FDA. Well, that's the under- thing. They're on our news here in Austin saying everybody's got to take the shot, get ready. They're on the news saying it will be mandatory coming up in the fall. It will be a pandemic. It will be mass death. And then people are lining up and they're saying, oh, we don't even know if this is the right thing. And just taking the shot, what do we know from past operations, Dr. Labo, and then General Stubblebine, about what they're putting in these vaccines? Well, they're putting adjuvants. Adjuvants are um, uh, substances, and uh, the ones that, they're, that we're most familiar with are the ones based on squalene, which is a fat ordinarily found in the nervous system. <clears throat> now, when you eat squalene or you rub it on your skin and it's used in a lot of cosmetics, It doesn't do anything bad to you, but if you inject it, it trains the immune system's white cells to attack it because it's a foreign uh, object in your bloodstream at that point, and the immune system is only doing its job. It turns on the immune system, and the immune system's attack forces can never be turned off again, so they start attacking everything that looks biochemically like squalene, And then this, according to other doctors we've had on, accelerates the allergies, the sicknesses, the cancers, and then makes your immune system go haywire. I want to talk about that more. We're about to go to break. But but General Stubblebine, you were just on six, seven months ago before this whole flu thing came up, and you guys were talking about when they try to launch a pandemic, don't take the shot. What does this look like to, to you? Well, it's very clear. You know, what uh, Dr. Rima and I have been doing, uh, Alex, has been uh, watching very carefully a whole lot of information. And I call them dots. Uh, they're tidbits of information. But it's part of the way I have been trained from 
the intelligence world or in the intelligence world of how you put the picture together. And you, what you do is you take little bits of information. For instance, 11 people died instantaneously in a trial in Poland, and then 22 more died later uh, from the same vaccine that you're about to take. And uh, then you uh, take the information about uh, Baxter, which uh, uh, contaminated the uh, vi uh, the vaccines for uh, 22 different countries in, uh, or 18 different countries in, in Europe.